Many of the CircuitPython code examples that we see use object-oriented programming. If you're not familiar with that, it might be useful to review a little bit some of the key ideas of object-oriented programming in Python. In object-oriented programming, a class is an abstract category of things. Within that abstract category, you can have particular instances of that class. These particular instances are called objects, or they're individuals of the class. In this example, we have the abstract idea of a car. The car objects would be particular instances of cars. In the case of the Cutie Pie RP2040, we have objects that represent physical parts of the board itself. For example, we could have a digital input-output objects. That's a general category of objects that we can deal with, and specific instances of digital input-output objects would be a button or a switch. So when we create an instance of a class, we often give it a name that's distinctive and descriptive of the object itself. Python has some built-in classes that you're probably already familiar with. For example, lists and dictionaries and strings. When you code using object-oriented programming, you create your own classes. And the names of these classes are usually capitalized. So for example, if there's a class called button, the class name would be capitalized. The way that you create a particular instance is by an assignment statement. We call this instantiating the object. So in this code, I'm creating an object that represents a particular button, and it is an instance of the overall class of button. Sometimes the class is defined within a module, and in that case, you have to prepend the module name in front of the class name. In this example, we might have a module named Algebra, and within that module, there's the definition of a class called Matrix. So to refer to that Matrix class, I have to say Algebra.Matrix. When I instantiate a particular instance of a matrix, then I would assign it an object name that is descriptive of the particular use of that object. In this case, it might be a matrix that defines the fitnesses of organisms. In these cases, instantiating the particular instance of the class did not require passing anything in to the class definition. In other cases, you have to pass in some kind of information in the form of arguments that is necessary in order to create the instance. In the example of a class called Poem, we might be required to pass in the title of the poem and the text of the poem before we can create a particular instance of a poem. Let's see how this plays out in terms of a specific code example, the one that we've been looking at before. In this example, the first line of code creates an object called IC2. This represents the IC2 connection. It's an example of the class IC2 that's a part of the bus IO module that we imported here. And in order to create that, we have to tell the code which of the board connections we want to use. As I said before, if we want to use the wired STEM QT connector, we have to say that we want to use the SCL1 and the SDA connections on the board, and that indicates that we're using the I squared C bus number one. So we pass that information in, it creates an IC2 instance, which we've called IC2. The next line of code then creates an instance of a sensor. And that sensor is specifically a VCNL4040 sensor instance. We have to pass in the IC2 object that we created in the previous line in order for the sensor object to know how it's going to communicate between the sensor and the board. 
So that particular class is defined in one of the specific modules that I had to install to make the sensor work by dragging it from the library into the board lib directory, and that's Adafruit VCNL 4040 module. Once I've created the instance of the sensor, then I can use the attributes of that sensor, like proximity and lux, in the code in order to find out what's happening in the sensor.